with uh, um, one of my favorite anime directors, uh, Shinkai Makoto, and um, uh, I really urge you to go see his new film tomorrow uh, when it's screened here at the uh, New York Anime Festival. It's a great opportunity. Um, we're just going to talk about a few uh, sort of topics that we've tossed back and forth and um, to sort of introduce some of you who might not know much about Shinkai san uh, but also to um, explore some of his themes and ideas and obsessions in his work. Um, as Vince said, he's one of the very few young anime artists who is uh, compared favorably with uh, Hayao Miyazaki in Japan, even though he doesn't accept that at all. <laughs> um, so, um, so I want to talk a little bit about his work as an artist. So the first thing I, I'd like to address is, uh, Shinkai-san, is your background, which, um, as some of you may know, uh, Shinkai-san does not come from a conventional illustrator's background. Uh, anime in Japan is still very much a, a 2D, hand-drawn, labor-intensive art form. Shinkai-san has a background in uh, computer graphics and in the gaming industry. So uh, my first question is, how does that um, affect you as an artist? How does that make you different from a conventional or traditional anime artist? So first of all, I want to say thank you for them. Um, <laughs> Hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, no, actually, my English is very bad, so I need to have uh, the translator. <laughs> it helps help me. But just, uh, so thank you for coming here. And uh, this is the first time for me coming to New York. It's a very big city. <laughs> and yeah, amazing. So after this panel, I want to go to App Store. <laughs> ジブリとかのスタジオはあのもちろんこうアナログから廃墟を描いているわけですよねそこが大きな違いだと思います so first of all um, like we said my, my background is in digital um, whereas for example in um, traditional places like Ghibli they do everything hand drawn僕はその最初にアニメーション作り始めた時は僕はあのまだアマチュアでゲーム会社に勤めてたんですねでまあアニメーションのようなものを作りたいと思って自分でこうどういう風に作っていっていいかなと思った時にあのまあ自分の手元
作り始めた時にはそのまあ僕一人で始めたので、えー、なるべく効率的にたくさんの絵を描く必要があったんですねでそれを1998年ぐらいから作り始めたんですけどその時ちょうどデジタルカメラっていうものがまあ安くなってきてみんなが使うようになってきてで僕はあのデジタルカメラを使ってまあ日常の風景の写真を撮ってあのデジタルカメラって撮った時点でもうそれが、ね、データですからコンピューターで。それをフォトショップで読み込んでそれをもとに絵を描くような方法をとってその、まあ、なるべく短い時間で一人でたくさんの絵を描くっていうその生産性につなげていきました。So, um, this was in around 1998 when I started making on c h a m b e r c a t What I did was I,、um, at that time, cameras became really cheap and anyone started using them. So I started going around and I took my digital camera and I took photos of、um, cityscapes and the streets and I used those images, uploaded to my computer, and used those as the foundation for the drawings that I made. And since I was working alone, I had to draw a lot of pictures, just drawing a lot of pictures, but it all fits together. This is going to be a kind of user friendly question. I know from other conventions I've attended and from this one that there are usually a number of people in the audience、uh, who wouldn't mind becoming animators themselves if they aren't already. So I wonder, since we're on this topic,、um, What, what kind of advice would you give to someone today who you know, sees your work and your accomplishments and, and would like to pursue、uh, the kind of art that you make? まあ、いいソフトもいいハードもあるしあのインターネットがあるので作ってすぐに人前に出して反応を得ることができるしそれはすごくまあ羨ましくて、まあ、どんどんねやるといいんじゃないかというふうには思うんですけど同時にあの物を作って外に出すまでが簡単にできすぎてしまって、えー、なんだろう自分の中にその何を作りたいのかというものをじっくり考える時間というのは短くななってるんんじゃないかと思うんですよねその作りたいものを自分の中に溜め込んで、えーまあ、出していくというのを、えー、成熟する時間が短くなってるんじゃないかとですから簡単にものを発表できてしまうことはいいことでもあるけれど同時にそれが、まあ、デメリットにもなりうるので、えー、なんだろうな、まあ、なるべく作りたいものを自分の中で成熟させる時間を大事にとってで実際の発表はまあデジタルの力を借りてねあのインターネットなどに大きく出していけばうまくいくかもしれないというふうには思います。Well, I mean, compared to when I started 10 years ago, you know, now the technology is amazing. You know, there's so many things that you guys can use、uh, for you to help you with your animation.、Um, and now, you know, you can really easily get this information out to just about anyone in many different ways.、Um, Because of that, though, I think that the amount of time that people take to really develop their ideas has gotten shorter. So I think it's really important to not only take advantage of these tools that you have at your disposal, but also to really take the time to develop these ideas within yourself and really think about what you want to animate. And then you can use these tools to create what you want to create. It's interesting you talked about、uh, using photographs <laughs> and walking around with a digital camera and taking a lot of pictures、uh, for the illustrations. And I'm wondering what drew you personally to create animation.、Um, because you know, I, I actually mentioned、uh, the, the, your use of photographs to a friend of mine recently in Boston, and、uh, she quite innocent, innocently said, Well, why didn't he just use the photographs? You know, <laughs> he's taking these great photographs. Why not just be a photographer or use the photos? Instead, obviously, you're using the photos to make animation.、Um, why do you do that?
Well, one reason is that I personally really, really like hand-drawn animation. Um, however, again, just as you guys know, when you're doing hand-drawn animation, it's not just one picture, it's many, many, many pictures put together. And that takes a lot of time. So I use the photos to sort of shorten the amount of time that's required to draw these pictures, but I still like the effect of the hand-drawn pictures. えっと、美しい何だろう、写真よりももっと現実の風景を美しいものにする必要があったんです。なのでその写真を元にはするんだけれども、それをさらに美しいところをもっと誇張して、さらに現実の風景よりも美しい現実の風景というものを映像にしていく必要がありました。People say they're not really beautiful cities. Um, however, I really wanted to think of my city as a beautiful city. So, you know, things like an image of like the sky through the buildings, or you know, a bunch of letters sticking out of a mailbox. You know, little moments like this I think are really beautiful, and I wanted to capture that. So I would take photos of the cityscape and then use that as a foundation to draw something even more beautiful. I wanted to create not only a beautiful city, just sort of in my mind, but also in reality. <coughs> Would you ever consider uh, setting a film in the ugly city of New York? New York Well, you know, New York is already the location for a lot of things that exist, so even if I do that now, I mean, it's not really much of a at least there's an Apple store. <laughs> um, okay, let's let's talk a little bit about um, storytelling and writing. Um, we're, we're looking at the gorgeous visuals on the screen, but as many of you know who've seen Shin Kaisen's films, and uh, it's not merely a beautiful thing to look at, but the stories are quite moving and quite profound. Um, in fact, I uh, when I was in Tokyo, I showed five centimeters to se uh, per second to a, a writer friend of mine, and, and uh, he just felt the, the quality of the stories themselves, uh, there's three linked short fictions actually, uh, was just astonishing. Can you talk a little bit about your writing process, Shinkai-san, how you, how you start drafting a story and how it comes together? <coughs> えっとですね、ま、作品によってちょっとずつ違うんですけど、一番最初に思い浮かぶのは大体言葉なんですね。登場人物のセリフです。あの、例えば秒速1センチメートルでは広いの女の子が来年も一緒に桜が見れるといい
僕はまあいろんな人に影響を受けてるんですけど一つは村上春樹の作品がすごく好きだったんですね、えー、大学でも国文学の勉強していたんですけどあ,の、まあ、あんまり勉強しないで村上の作品ばかり読んでいたんですがあので文章を書くことが、まあ、彼の影響もあると思うんですがすごく好きなんですですから最終的に作るのは映像なんですけど最初小説のような形でまずあの、まあ、文章で、えー、仕上げていくんですねそうまあそれがねあのもう一つのやり方です Well, and another thing I do is I take inspiration from the works that I like.、Uh, when I was a student, I actually was、um, a literature major, but really I just spent all of my time reading Miyazaki's books, which I really, really enjoyed.、Um, so, I mean, I'm. Murakami Haruki's novels. Sorry. And. <laughs> Murakami Haruki's novels. Sorry. And. 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 Sorry. Actually, after finishing、uh, Murakami Haruki's、uh, forthcoming novel, Ichi Ichi Kyu Hachion,、uh, 1Q84, I guess in English,、um, which won't surprise, it's not a giveaway to anyone, features a, a, a love story. And、uh, a story of, of、uh, two people who are trying to get back together after having an initial encounter, a romantic encounter. I'm not telling anymore.、Um, but, Of course, as I was reading it, I suddenly thought, wow, that seems familiar. And、uh, as many of you know who've seen Shinkai san's work, they often feature love stories, and、uh, often quite melancholic love stories about、uh, losing touch, losing contact with the person of your affections. So、um, I wondered if I could ask you a kind of blunt question、um, Do you think love is doomed? <laughs> Love isn't doomed, of course.、Um, but, you know, in real life, love doesn't always work out. You know, sometimes your first love, you don't end up with that person that you fell in love with and things like that. So, I mean, I think I'm just really reflecting what real life is like. And also, you know, in the stories, even if you don't end up with the person you like, you can still enjoy life and you can still enjoy the beautiful things in life. And I think that that's really the message that I was trying to portray. It's good because I happen to think love is doomed, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seriously, the, the,、um, another element、uh, of Shinkai san's films, and obviously we've talked about visuals here a little bit, a little bit about a story, but also the music is just so well selected. I think it, it, it merges at the right point in the film, it doesn't overwhelm the film. A brilliant selection of music、uh, for the soundtrack. I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about that process, how you go about selecting music. そうですねあのまあ一つその主題歌に関して言えばあの、まあ、作品ごとに違うんですけど秒速5センチメートルの時にはまずストーリーを書いてでそのストーリーが日本であの90年代の少し昔の話でしたので90年代の日本のヒットソングを使いたいと思って、まあ、例
たくさんのまあポップソングを聴いてその中で一番イメージに合うものがあの山崎雅義の「ワンマータイムワンマーチャンス」っていう曲だったんですね。あのーまあ、そんなふうに作品が先にあって後から曲を選ぶというやり方が一つあります。Well, I mean, it depends on the movie.、Um, but for example, for five centimeters per second,、um, I decided after creating the story that I wanted to use a song from the 90s. So I listened to a lot of popular hit songs from the 90s, and、um, ultimately the one that I liked was the one that you hear in the movie, which is One More Life, One More Chance. So, the Jikai Sak, the last time you can see it, the Hoshio Kodomo to Sak Hin Dewa. まあ、熊木アンリという熊木さんっていうねあのシンガーソングライターの方に主題歌を書いてもらったんですけど映画のためにあのまあ映画が終わって最後に撮ってつけたように有名な人の曲が流れるという形にはしたくなかったのでえまあ熊木さんというあのアーティストの方に頻繁にスタジオに通ってもらってコンテも読んでもらって脚本も読んでもらってえスタッフも紹介してで。えー、と作品の制作チームの一員になってもらってで彼女にその中から出てくる気持ちを曲にしてもらいましたですから、えー、保証子供の音楽は多分作品のその本質にマッチしたものになってるんじゃないかと思います。Um, And she actually, what I did, I didn't want to use a famous person's song. So, what we did was we found her and we invited her to come down to the studio. She met the staff, she read the script, and she really became a member of the team. And then she created the song from the feelings that she developed as being a,、um, a team member for this movie. So, you know, it's not like an independent project, she really was part of the creation of the movie. あとまあもう一つあのバックグラウンドイメージ BGM についてなんですけど僕はあのこの10年間ずっと天文という天文さんという、えー、まあ作曲家とずっと組んでね一緒にやってるんですで彼はもともと僕のゲーム会社時代の先輩だったんですけれどもあのー、まあ彼はですねあのー、例えば映画を作るとなって、えー、こういう曲が必要だからって言って彼にまあお願いするわけですけどで。当然それがイメージに合わない時があるわけですよねですからリテイクを出して作り直してくださいっていうふうに、まあ、心苦しいんですがお願いするんですがでもまあ彼はねそれをこう嫌な顔せずに何度言っても10回 NG を出してもあの10回ともねあのニコニコ笑ってね作り直してくれるわけですよねあのまあそういう音楽家との密接なやり取りというのも作品ごとに全てやっています。Um, also, if you guys notice from the movies,、um, someone that I use very frequently as a background music creator for a lot of the movies is Tenmon, Mr. Tenmon. And he is actually a senior、uh, member from the game company that I used to work at.、Um, and so, you know, whenever we tell him, you know, we need a song for this, and he would, he would just create it for us. And sometimes, you know, the songs didn't quite match what we were expecting, but you know, no matter how many times we'd ask him to rewrite it, even if it was 5, 10, 20 times, he would always smile and just fix it, and it would always work out. That raises a very a practical question.、Uh, when, you, when you visit anime studios in, in Japan,、um, they're usually, usually quite small,、um, with a lot of little cubicle desks crammed together, and people hovering over them with fluorescent light bulbs and cup noodles <laughs> next to their desks.、Um, I visited,、uh, uh, well, Vince actually, actually took me over to、uh, Shinkai san studio when they were、uh, finishing the new film. And、um, can you just explain? You know, you're obviously not working solo anymore.、Um, roughly, how many people you work with and what your staff does? えっとですね、あの僕たちのスタジオは大体まあ多い時で20人ぐらいメインスタッフがいますで多くはアニメーターとバックグラウンドアーティストですねあのそのメインスタッフが多い時で、まあ、20人なんですが「星を子供っていう映画全体で言うとあの細かな色をね一枚一枚キャラクターの色を塗る人とかも含めれば200人近くのスタッフがいますが、えー、常勤しているという意味ではまあ20人ぐらい。So,、um, at most, we actually have about 20 main staff. I personally am the animator and the background artist. 
But um, in terms of any sort of small animations that need to be done or individual character drawings, we have at most about 200 artists that or 200 staff that work in the studio. So, yes. And then, 僕たちのスタジオもそんなに大きくはなくて、えー、まあそんなに狭くもないですけど人が少ないのでねそんなに狭くもないんですけどでもまあカップラーメンはねよくみんな好きで食べています<笑>えっとお塩子供の仕上げの時期に日本にあの大きな地震があってですね、えー、まああの,かんあの北陸の方で。北陸じゃないや東北の方で大震災があったんですがその時に、まあ、東京もかなり揺れたんですけれども、えー、スタッフの中に韓国人の女の子が1人いてですねあの韓国には地震がないのでもうその子はこう泣,きすけ泣き叫んで韓国語で「おむにおむに」って「お母さんお母さん」って泣き叫んでいたんですけれどもあの彼女のお母さんから韓国からたくさんのこう救援物資みたいなものが段ボールで届いてその中には。たくさんそのシンラーメンですか韓国のカップラーメンがたくさん入っていてあのそれにずいぶんね助けられました<笑> Well, I mean, our office is not that big but there's not very, very, very many people so it doesn't feel that small um, However, for example, like and actually everyone that really does love ramen um, <laughs> when we were making Children Who Chase Lost Voices was actually during that huge earthquake that hit um, Japan as you guys all um, probably know about Um, and actually, we felt some of that shaking down in Tokyo. And um, one of the animators, actually, who works in the uh, one of the staff who works in the studio, is actually from Korea. And she was very she doesn't have a lot of experience with earthquakes. She was really scared and was like crying and like you know, yelling when it happened. Um, and actually, her mom sent us a care package from Korea that was, uh, among other things, had a whole bunch of Korean ramen noodles in it. So that really saved us because at that time, you know. Food was kind of scarce and there were a lot of problems, so that, that, that care package really saved us. I, I have nothing against cup ramen. <laughs> um, quickly uh, switch over to the, to the new film because some of you will, have, will, will be attending it tomorrow. Um, to some extent, uh, Children Who Chase Lost Voices is uh, a, a departure in a way from. Shinkai Sun's earlier work. There's still uh, beautiful imagery, um, the sort of brilliant rendering of very Japanese textures is in this film as well. And, uh, and there is, of course, a, a love story of sorts in the, in the story itself. But the, uh, the narrative actually um, takes off into uh, quasi mythical worlds and almost uh, has a, um, a, an Orpheus. Nature to it in its uh, exploration of an underworld called Agartha. Actually, um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about this new film and why you you took off in, in a more epic direction in the story. <laughs> とですね、おっしゃる通り今回の作品はあの、まあ、死者をよみ,がえさよみがえさせるためにあの地下の世界に行くという話なんですねあの、まあ、ギリシャ神話のオルフェイスの話というのもありますけど日本だとあ日本の神話の「古事記」というものの中に同じような話はあります世界的にあの、まあ、共通の、ねえー、やっぱりテーマだと思うんですよね死んだものに死んだ人間にもう一度会いたいのはそういう話になってますね。So yes, as you said, um, this story is a little bit different. Um, in this one, we have the characters who go sort of down to hell or to the underground. They're trying to um, summon someone who has passed away. And this is something that you, have, you can see actually in a traditional Japanese story called the Kojiki, which is a historical um, story. And you also see it on a lot of epic um, stories as well. まあ、日本少なくとも日本を取り巻く日本の社会の雰囲気が制作をしている時に変わったからだと思うんですね秒速5センチメートルの時はまだ僕たちの,その日本の日常というのはこのまま変わらずにずっと続いていくという感覚があったんですねですので秒速のようなその日常を美しく描いてやっぱそれをこう愛おしく愛すことのできるような作品を作りたいと思ってあれを作ったんです Um, so, uh, to answer the question, though, sort of one of the big reasons is well, for example, when we were doing five centimeters per second, 
at that time, Japan was sort of in an era where it felt like nothing would ever change. And so I wanted to make a movie that really sort of reflected that sort of feeling. その後その星を子供を作り始めた時はまあ地震はねあの東北の大震災まだ起こる前ではあったんですけど例えばまあリーマンショックがねアメリカであったりとかその影響は日本でも小さくなかったのでその日本の日常生活がこのまま続くのだというふうにはもう無条件には信じることができないっていう空気がねあの僕たちの社会の中にあったような気がするんですね少なくとも僕はそういうふうに感じていましたからですから。次作る作品は日本の日常生活を描くものではなくて日常が失われてしまうような作品にしようとあの日常から失われてまあねあのそれでそれをどう,復どう回復するのかという話にしたいと思ったんですねですから今回の主人公は異世界に行って、まあ、最後は異世界から戻ってくるわけですがそのようなその神話的な、ねえー、構造を持った作品にしたわけです。However, when we made the new movie,、um, there were sort of a lot of things happening, not just in Japan. This is actually before the、uh, earthquake happened, but there were things happening around the world, for example, like the earthquake in Chile,、um, that was really starting to have an effect on Japan and really kind of made not only me, but really a lot of people think that maybe things would actually not stay the same after all. So I really wanted to create a movie that、um, reflected that sort of change and maybe realizing that yes things actually are going to start changing so that's why the main character in the movie has to go to another world and i mean eventually she'll come back but there's that sort of sense that maybe things are going to be lost and things are going to change and things will not remain the same after that. i should add here shikai-san has spoken before about、um, his desire as an artist to try to give hope to、uh, people who are suffering In Japan right now, and the victims of the awful、uh, earthquake and tsunami、uh, in March.、Um, I want to make sure we have time to turn this over to you and, and、uh, have, a, have a chance for you to ask Jinkai san some questions. Just to sort of wind up here,、um, we talked about the two big M's, Miyazaki and Murakami.、Uh, are there any other artists that come to mind, specific artists who you consider? Influences on your work or artists that seem like models for you? まあ、最初に思い浮かぶのはあのエヴァンゲリオンを作った安野秀明さんです。エヴァンゲリオンのテレビシリーズの最後の2話って皆さんきっと見たことある人がいると思うんですけどあのもうほとんど登場人物の会話とそのね静止画の切り替え静止画の繰り返しだけで、まあ、あの技術的には成り立ってるわけですあれを僕大学生の時に見てあのあアニメって動かなくてもできるんだというふうに思ったんですよねあの安野さん的には別にそれは忙しくてああいうふうになったのかもしれないしあの意図ではなかったのかもしれないんですけどでもあんなふうに人のしゃべる言葉と静止画の繰り返しだけでも見てるこちらすごく引き込まれたんですよねですからあの「エヴァンゲリオン」の最後の2話の作り方を見てあのアニメーションを作ってみたいという気持ちになりました。The last few episodes of Ava h a s some very interesting sort of departed from the rest of the series kind of things going on there.、Um, and you know, when I saw that when I was in college, I thought it was amazing. You know, there are just scenes where not much is happening.、Um, and I thought, wow, you know, this, this is also anime. This is animation. You know, it doesn't always have to be about crazy movements and lots of action. Sometimes it's also about the words that are being spoken, or maybe even the lack of words that are not being spoken. So, you know, I really, that really has had a big impact on me. It's excellent. Let's、uh, have a round of applause for Shinkai s a n for putting up with my question. And I guess now we have microphones.、Uh, I think there's a, one in the middle of the floor.、Um, I don't know how convenient that is for everyone, but I would like to <laughs> offer you an opportunity, great opportunity. Since he's here all the way from Tokyo, to ask、uh, Shikai s a n some questions.
I mean, I'm from Maker. Uh, uh, I just returned. I was living in Japan. I was living in Kyoto. And um, it was a very eye-opening experience for me. You know, I, I really, uh, as a filmmaker, draw most of my inspiration from the nation. And um, it's something that I would be really much interested in pursuing. Um, I, I'm not sure exactly where to start. And um, as a filmmaker, I enjoy really using sound. Uh, you should probably ask the question just because yes, we don't have sorry, much time. Yes, okay. As a sound designer and as somebody who's going to be moving there now and living in a place like Japan, where do you think uh, is a good place for me to start? Uh, also specifically to apply that, maybe because I'm not necessarily working on a film only, but to use sound, where should I start? You said you're going to tour to Japan or you were in Japan? I was and I'm returning. I'm going back. Mac Pro で Mac Pro 
ソフトウェアはあのアフターエフェクツとフォトショップと、えー、ライトウェーブ 3D っていうちょっとマイナーな 3DCG ソフトですねあとファイナルカットです Okay, so I use a MacBook Pro, After Effects,、um, Photoshop, LightWeb, which is a CGI program, and Final Cut. <laughs>
world uh, with a kind of flatness and simplicity, and yet magical and surreal things happen in Murakami's uh, novel. Okay, I think we have time for just one more yeah, question. But remember to go see the movie tomorrow at 11. Um, also, there's a, a public signing as well, like it's in your programs. So, last question, please. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, my first work is something that I created all by myself. And actually, at first I thought, you know, to do something all by myself was better because I really didn't feel comfortable and I didn't think it was very good at communicating with others. But uh, especially after creating Five Standing for Second and um, Children Who Chase Lost Voices, I really come to feel that um, it's actually a good thing to create, to collaborate and create something. Um, and that I realized that, you know, being alone for so long that I really wanted to actually go out and be in the world. and you know, a great way for me to make a commitment to society and to really sort of participate is to do something as a collaboration and work with the team to create something beautiful. So let's have a, a, a big, ugly New York City. <laughs>